Yes, I recognize the irony in saying that they should bring in new villains and then immediately talking about Doctor Doom. I'll try to keep this brief, but basically, the way I see it, Doctor Doom is too important of a villain to not use in the MCU. He's the FF's arch nemesis, and he's one of the most iconic characters in all of Marvel. I mean, heck, he leads his own country. With that being said, I do think that Marvel should be careful with their portrayal of Doom. None of his previous cinematic incarnations were received particularly well, and I think it would be a good idea to build him up over the course of several films as opposed to blowing their shot in the FF's first adventure. Doom has the potential to very easily become one of the MCU's next big villains, so the filmmakers need to tread lightly and ensure that they have everything all lined up and ready before they unleash him. You want to hear a really easy way to introduce Doctor Doom into the MCU? have him take over Sokovia and help it return to its former glory after all that stuff with Ultron, renaming it Latveria in the process. This way, he has ties to both the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, and his rebranding of the country symbolizes the updating of the old MCU in order to set the stage for the future. Boom. Call me Kevin. Let's talk about the Mole Man. This is Mole Man in the morning. Good Mole Man to you. He's a scientist who discovered a subterranean realm, which he soon took over. He enlisted his mutated followers in a quest to take over the surface world, but the Fantastic Four have consistently proven to be a thorn in his side. Considering the fact that he was the first villain they ever faced in the comics, Mole Man would be a really fun starter villain for the FF's first MCU movie. He's not a super complex character, but his presence would lend the opportunity for some incredible subterranean battles and creature VFX. Heck, they could even get John Ratzenberger back to play him. Wait, wrong superhero movie. Behold the Underminer! Also, just a quick fun fact, originally Tim Blake Nelson's character from 2015's Fantastic Four was supposed to become Mole Man, but that franchise crashed and burned before it even got off the ground. Poor guy, he just can't catch a break with these future supervillain roles. Before anyone leaves any comments, yes, I am aware that Ulysses Claw died in Black Panther. While that is admittedly a roadblock to him coming back, this is still a comic book universe, and the pages of the Fantastic Four's very own book may provide the perfect excuse for his return. In 1966's Fantastic Four number 53, Claw, who used a sonic blaster in place of his missing hand, converted his body into living sound following an encounter with Black Panther and the FF. The fact that he was equipped with a similar prosthetic blaster in Black Panther lays the groundwork for this origin to play out in the MCU, albeit with some slight alterations. Maybe Reed Richards tries to do some experiments with Claw's blaster, only to unwittingly bring him back to life with it. Huh? I don't know, it's something. Claw is a fairly significant Marvel villain. I mean, he's one of the primary members of the Masters of Evil, so it's a shame that he died so quickly. But the Fantastic Four's MCU debut provides the perfect opportunity to bring him back, and as a returning villain, he would in turn very quickly help connect the team to the greater universe. I think Claw would make a fantastic recurring villain, popping up in various places across the Marvel Universe to do some hammy acting, get in a cool fight scene, and then eventually get taken down by whatever hero he's up against. Plus, I gotta see Andy Serkis rocking that bright red jumpsuit on the big screen. I mean, come on. While I'm sure Marvel isn't exactly dying to remind everyone of their ill-fated Inhuman series, Maximus the Mad should not be left out of consideration for a Fantastic Four movie. For those of you who didn't watch that series, and let's be real, there's probably a lot of you, Maximus is an Inhuman prince who very badly wants to usurp his brother, Black Bolt, as the leader of their people. While he may not actually have superpowers, Maximus is still a major threat thanks to his genius-level intellect and tactical skills. In the comics, his coup attempts have frequently been foiled with the aid of the FF, and his first appearance actually took place in a Fantastic Four comic. Marvel certainly doesn't have to acknowledge the Inhuman show, and they don't even have to bring back the same actor. But if they do decide that they want to bring the Inhumans into the MCU, the Fantastic Four would also be a great group of heroes to do it, because they've crossed paths with the Inhuman royal family so many times in the comics. There's plenty of story potential that could come out of both sides' family dynamics, with Maximus manipulating things as revenge for his status as an outcast. Obviously, we don't want to get carried away in their first films, but maybe this could happen in a sequel or something, but the point is that Maximus could end up being a key character for the MCU's future. I will admit, Nicholas all along doesn't quite have the same ring, but we can work with it. Nicholas Scratch is the son of Agatha Harkness, and a very powerful magic user in his own right. His sinister schemes have included brainwashing the Fantastic Four, kidnapping Franklin Richards, and causing an entire town to become possessed by demons. In her debut, his mother proved to be a wildly popular character, so it seems like a no-brainer to bring Nicholas into the MCU. With Agatha currently trapped in Westview, Nicholas could free her and then join her in causing havoc. Scarlet Witch has moved on to bigger and badder things, so the Fantastic Four could be a perfect target for this diabolical mother-son duo. 
They would serve as a powerful counter to the FF's family relationship, and it would be a lot of fun to see the more science-based 4 collide with the world of dark magic. From beyond the stars shall come the Overmind, and he shall crush the universe. That's the prophecy that foretold the Eternal Grom's transformation into the Overmind. Having had the consciousnesses of billions of other Eternals transferred into him, Grom set out to conquer the universe, but he constantly found himself opposed by the Fantastic Four. He's occasionally fought on the side of good, but for the most part, he's been completely dedicated to his mission of conquest. Overmind's introduction would give the Fantastic Four an incredibly challenging foe right off the bat to help them prove themselves as heroes. Additionally, it would be smart to introduce him soon, because the Eternals' debut movie just came out. Overmind's appearance in an FF movie would be a convenient way to tie the team in with the MCU's more cosmic side, plus it would allow the Eternals to interact with other heroes. That's what we in the biz call a win-win. While he may not technically be a full-fledged villain, Namor definitely falls under the category of antagonist, at least in terms of his interactions with the Fantastic Four. He's the Prince of Atlantis, and over the years he's been very persistent in wanting to take Sue Storm as his queen, whether she wants to or not. Obviously, this has led to tensions between the surface world and the Atlanteans, and while Namor has served as an ally to the FF on occasion, they usually find themselves on opposing sides. Namor's arrival to the MCU has been discussed by fans for years, and there's been a rumor gaining traction recently that he may be introduced in the Black Panther sequel. If this ends up being true, then it seems like it'll only be a matter of time until he crosses paths with the First Family. His obsession with the Invisible Woman from the source material may be a bit problematic for Marvel Studios, and they may want to give him a different motivation that's less... creepy? But other than that, I think Namor could fit really well into an MCU Fantastic Four story. Plus, there's a whole new crazy cast of characters that he could bring into the MCU with him, like Atuma, Lyra, and Dr. Dorcas. Yes, those are in fact all real comic book characters. I did not make those up. Not even Dr. Dorcas, which sounds like a name some schoolyard bully would come up with. What happens when you take all the powers of the Fantastic Four and give them to a megalomaniacal alien bent on taking over the galaxy? Well, you get the Super Skrull. His real name is Clerked, and he's one of the greatest warriors of the shape-shifting Skrull species. After a previous defeat at the hands of the First Family, the Skrulls imbued Clerk with their powers and sent him to Earth for another takeover attempt. This too failed, and Clerk has since become a recurring foe of the FF, with his powers providing him a unique advantage over his opponents. The Skrulls have been slowly but surely popping up in different corners of the MCU since their introduction in Captain Marvel, and an adaptation of the iconic Secret Invasion story is set to premiere later this year. Obviously, I don't know what's going to happen in that show, but I'm going to guess that the Skrulls aren't going to succeed in their plan to replace everyone on Earth. Just a hunch, I don't think that would make for many very good sequels. So I'm thinking the aftermath of Secret Invasion would be a good place to bring in the Super Skrull. The only real hurdle to this is the fact that we still have no idea when exactly the Fantastic Four's first movie is supposed to come out. So this year may be just a bit early to bring in Clerk himself. Still, Secret Invasion seems like it's going to be a major moment for the MCU, and I wouldn't be surprised if its events continue to ripple across the universe for years to come. Maybe even far enough into the future for the Super Scroll to want to come to Earth and fight our newest hero team. After having been defeated by Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four one too many times, the villain known as the Wizard assembled a quartet of bad guys to counter the First Family, dubbing his newly created team the Frightful Four. Though the team's gone through a number of different lineups over the years, the Wizard has consistently remained their leader, ensuring that their vendetta against the FF stays alive. We all know how much Marvel loves to have their heroes face off against their evil counterparts, and the inclusion of the Frightful Four would continue that trend while also putting a fun spin on it. Instead of being direct evil counterparts to the FF, the villains could instead counter the team's specific powers. With the Wizard's anti-gravity discs negating Mr. Fantastic's powers, Trapster's glue incapacitating Human Torch, etc. However, the biggest reason why I think the Frightful Four would make good villains for the FF's first MCU outing is that they could help highlight the team's most important element. Not their powers, but their family dynamic. The Fantastic Four truly care for each other in a way that the Frightful Four never could. Because while the FF are united by love, the Frightful Four are united by hatred and a desire for vengeance. It would be a heartwarming and inspiring victory that could cement the Fantastic Four as fan favorites and major players for the future of the MCU. Philip Masters is the Puppet Master, a supervillain with the ability to control the minds of others using puppets. He debuted in the pages of 1962's Fantastic Four No. 8, and since then he's gone on to have a long and complicated relationship with the First Family, particularly The Thing. You see, Puppet Master's got a daughter named Alicia, who's in love with The Thing. And when you're a supervillain, that kind of stuff doesn't bode well. 
just ask the Vulture. Although he may not be the FF's flashiest foe, I think there's a lot of potential for Puppet Master as a movie villain. His tactic of mentally controlling people with puppets could make for a really tense and psychological story as our heroes try to figure out who's been replaced. Oh wait, that's just Secret Invasion. Uh, 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 alternatively, we could get a cool mass brainwashing plot where he could turn ordinary citizens or even other heroes against the Fantastic Four. That way we could get some fun Civil War type hero versus hero action. Putting all the action stuff aside, I think the most exciting thing about Puppet Master is that his inclusion would give Marvel a perfect opportunity to explore the Thing's psyche. His relationship with Alicia is a key part of his character thanks to the way she helps him stay in touch with his humanity. And not including this element in the MCU feels like it would be a big misstep. All signs point to Kang the Conqueror becoming one of the MCU's new biggest threats, and the time-traveling supervillain holds a much deeper, and more complicated, connection to the Fantastic Four than you may have initially guessed. You see, Kang's real name is Nathaniel Richards, and he's a descendant of Mr. Fantastic's time-traveling scientist father who hails from the 31st century. Yeah, comic books are confusing. Nathaniel first encounters the Fantastic Four, who are technically his ancestors, when he travels back in time to take over Egypt. The Four, who have also traveled back in time, defeat him, kicking off a chain of events that lead to Nathaniel returning to the future and reinventing himself as Kang the Conqueror. At this point, Kang becomes more of an Avengers foe, though he still holds a deep enmity against the First Family for being the first ones to defeat him. Now that's obviously a lot of lore that I don't expect the MCU to fully adapt, but I would imagine that they'd want to pick and choose specific pieces of Kang's backstory to include, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if the Fantastic Four connection carries over. While we're still a few years out from actually seeing the FF in the MCU, Kang's early arrival seems to be a way of rolling out the red carpet and preparing audiences for many more escapades to come involving the Richards family. When Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer turned Galactus into a giant cloud, it was one of the biggest comic book movie blunders since Batman pulled out the bad credit card. Seven million. Never leave the cave without him. It's a decision that's long been ridiculed by fans and critics alike, and I think that the giant pink planet eater deserves a shot at redemption in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the comics, Galactus is a massive cosmic entity who is so powerful that he has to devour planets in order to sustain himself. He first came to Earth in 1966, sending his herald, the Silver Surfer, to warn the planet's citizens of their upcoming demise. With the aid of the Surfer, the Four managed to drive Galactus off, though he has returned multiple times over the years. Guy just can't get enough of that tasty, tasty Earth. Galactus is one of the Marvel Universe's greatest threats, and he's very unique among his fellow villains. He's not some cackling conqueror or some mad scientist bent on taking over the world. He doesn't care at all about power or control. At the end of the day, he's just a really hungry, really big guy. Like Garfield. Where have you been all my life? You know I can't resist you when you wear garlic in your meat sauce. Now that's a funny cat who loves lasagna. No, but for real though, I could definitely see Galactus becoming the MCU's next big Thanos-level threat, especially as the universe's cosmic side continues to grow. He could be a unifying force that could bring together characters like the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and the Eternals. His arrival would bring a whole new level of danger to the MCU, because he can't really be reasoned with or persuaded. Imagine you were feeling snacky, so you went to the pantry to grab some chips, but some tiny little creatures all of a sudden showed up and said, hey, you can't have those chips. I'd be upset. I'm hungry. He is technically a villain, but Galactus is really better qualified as a force of nature. Neither good or bad. Only hungry. 